Hey, this is CUSD Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 6, even more graphs of functions. All right, so this first one here we're going to talk through a little bit. Not going to solve it all, but uh, going to talk it through to make sure you're understanding what it's asking you to do in case you're a little bit stuck. It says, first of all, Elena starts to walk home from school but has to turn around and go back because she left something in her locker. On her way back home, the second time, she runs into her friend who invites her to the library to do homework with her. She stays at the library and then heads home to do her chores. Determine which graph fits with Elena's story. Okay, looking at the story and trying to make a graph that goes with that. And what two quantities are, uh, what two quantities are, so we're gonna put some labels here to the story. And then which quantity is a function of which? So what thing is determined by, or depends on the other thing, okay? So it's looking at what depends on what. Okay, so. Looking at the graphs here, we can see that there's something happening where this one seems to be starting at one point and it comes down to nothing up here, right? So it kind of starts high and ends with nothing. This one starts low and ends up here higher. Okay, so we have graphs kind of going a couple different ways here. They seem to be doing uh, almost like the opposite, right? When this one goes down, this one goes up. When this one goes up, this one goes down. They both stay the same for a bit. Then they go the opposite direction, opposite direction, stay a bit opposite. So it's a question of which one's going to be the function is going to determine our x and our y. So the difference there is which one is dependent upon the other. So we'll come back to that in a second. Let's take a look at the story here. Elena starts to walk home from school but has to turn around and go back. So let's say we're keeping track of her movement, right? Okay, here she is at, there's her school. Okay, and she walks. She would be walking there, and then she has to come back the same exact uh, distance, right? She walks that far, and then walks that far. You were thinking about it on a horizontal side of things. But the other thing that's happening, though, is going to be the uh, amount of time it takes to do this here. So we know that time is a function here, or time is some part of our equation, because there's time happening. Okay, at some point, the time runs out, and she finally makes it home. But what changes though is going to be maybe that distance that she's traveling. So we know she starts to walk home. Okay, so she starts moving kind of that direction, right? She's going home. But then she has to turn around and go back. Now because she's going to go back, we know that she's going to go the other direction. And we can see that in both of these charts here, right? They're going one way, then they go back the other way. It's going one way, then going back the other way. They both do that in a sense. On our way back home the second time, so she's continuing this journey on the back way back home, so it's more the same direction. So if we went this way, we're going to continue to go this way again. What's interesting here is both of them have a little spot where not much is happening, correct? Well, that not much happening probably is going to be where what? She's back at school, in her locker, looking for something. She runs into her friend as she's walking back home and they decide to go to the library to do some homework, okay? So, at the locker, there's kind of a pause there, isn't there? At the library, she goes to the library, which is a different direction, right, uh, than home, not the same direction we know of. Maybe it's, we can think of this as kind of a going back to the library. And she stays at the library. So, we have a couple things. We're gonna have a pause at the locker place, and maybe a pause at the library place. And then she finally heads home and continues the journey home to do her chores. So what's happening here is we can see she's walking towards home. She goes back. She hangs on her locker. She goes back to her home. Then she goes to the library, stays a little bit, and then goes back home. And these graphs are both showing that there. Okay. And what's changing over time is going to be her distance uh, from home because that's her goal her goal is to get home and she eventually does there so in our case here we can think about this being the school okay little school there's our school nice big old school there and maybe over here this becomes her house okay so we can think about it being the distance from school to her house and that's where she's going there um, in this case actually I probably should put school her school up here if I'm thinking about this right because that's not going to be right there that's not going to be the distance this way it's probably the other way it's probably better to think about that being the 
how the school up here, and this being our distance, this being a school, and this being how far it is to get home. Okay? Okay, and this becomes our time on this part there. And so we would say that her distance from school or from home or to home depends upon how much time or how far she's walked, basically. Okay? And so most likely you're going to use the graph A most likely, but you know, look at B, think about it, you decide what's gonna be there and do some labeling. What do you think is gonna work? Alright, moving on to two. So solve for y, then graph the equation. So let's do that here. Let's keep the y on this side because it's nice and positive already. So let's add 8x over here. So we'll add 8x. Can't combine it with that. It's a different variable, right? This is an x. This is nothing. So over here we have 8x minus 4 equals 2y. We can divide everything by 2. So every part gets divided by 2, not just one of them. So we divide everything by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4x. Negative 4 divided by 2 becomes a negative 2, and that equals y. So now if we write that in this form, we would say y equals 4x minus 2. And just like last time, our slope is a number in front. You would say 4, or we could say 4 over 1. And our y-intercept is the value there. It's not 2, it's negative 2. Keep that in mind, it's the whole bit right there. So knowing this, we could plot our first point at 0, comma, negative 2. And then we could use our slope to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. Do it again, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. And then we could play connect the dots and have ourselves a nice graph. All right, now let's look at our last section here, solving for x. I'm not going to do number 4 because we did this one yesterday. Again, remember there's like a negative 1 in front, so distribute that, then solve. I'll do this one today instead because it has a fraction. So let's go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. So negative 6 and a negative 8 combine the same signs. We'll find the sum to make a negative 14 equals 1 half of x. To separate the half from the x, we're going to multiply this by 2 which means multiply this by 2, right? That's going to be canceling out. So on this side, we're left with just an x. And negative 14 times a positive 2 is a negative 28. And that becomes our solution right there. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.